Hi everyone, welcome back to the All Inclusive Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Noelle France. She is the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Belonging at Avantor. We discussed her journey from marketing to leading DEI initiatives, the challenges of gaining buy-in, not just from senior leadership, but also frontline employees. And she tackles the skepticism around DEI as a passing trend. Noelle shares her insights on building trust, driving real change, and ensuring everyone feels included in the strategy. As always, before jumping into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell, and follow on your favorite podcast platform so that you never miss an episode. That being said, let's jump in. Hi, Noelle. Hello, how are you, Natasha? I'm good, how are you? Doing wonderful, thank you. Happy to be here today. Yeah, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> Thanks so much <laughs> for joining me. So um, let's get started. Let's kick things off. Tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and your journey into DEI leadership. Sure, yeah. So Noelle France, I'm based out of Rochester, New York. And I have been in this role leading diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging at Avantour for about three and a half years. Um, I've been with the company for 19 years now, so in many different fields and positions other than DEI, uh, mostly within the marketing field, but it's always been a passion of mine. It's certainly how I tried to lead my teams with an eye to inclusion and equity. And honestly, since I can remember maybe being five years old, um, it's been something that is a leading value of mine to try to create equity and to understand where there's injustice in the world and really try to be a part of positive change. So it's something that has fueled me since I was a child and I have now the privilege and opportunity to have that be a part of my role. When I came into the role or really just beforehand, when Avantour announced they were going to focus on DEI, I made myself quite vocal and visible at the time. It was really a finally moment for me. Uh, with the organization, and I knew I wanted to be a part of it. I did not really anticipate that I would be offered the opportunity to interview for the role when they were standing up the DEI office. And it was a bit of a scary career change to anticipate pivoting from digital marketing into an HR centered role. However, of many of the skills that I have from my previous positions translated quite easily here. And now I feel I'm able to not only do good work, but to do good. And so it's been a fantastic journey. That's that's quite an inspiring journey. Um, 19 years at an organization, and now you're able to sit in a position to really create some amazing experiences for the employees um, as you're one of them and you're a longstanding yeah. one <laughs> as well at like that. So yes, how, for sure. how has your personal experience really impacted the way in which you approach the DEI initiatives that you put in place at Avantor? I think being an entry-level employee at the organization and really entering corporate America at that time when I began with Avantor, I had a lot of questions in terms of why things were set up the way that they were. And even looking at representation and leadership and not seeing myself reflected there at the time and questioning that. I now have the ability to have a seat at the table and address those questions that I had as an entry-level employee. And I always respect people who have been on the come up, who started <laughs> very much in the entry-level position and then rise through striving to get to a more senior leadership position who still remember, as I do, those years that were spent on the front line, those years that were spent as an hourly employee and what I wanted to see as benefits and opportunities for advancement and visibility to leadership at that time that I knew were critical factors in terms of advancement and being able to now bring those back into the organization and ensure that we are giving equitable opportunities for people to succeed because I certainly was striving for those when I was in that role. So I'm very mindful of the experience of all of our associates and how diverse our population is. 
and the need to make sure that we are providing access to everyone, no matter who they are, what work they do, where they are in the world. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so important. And and when we talk about DEI, we do talk about senior leadership and making sure that we mm-hmm. can get that buy-in from the board about what the work that we're doing. Um, but I know in previous conversations, and it's clear from what you said as well, is that mm-hmm. that is obviously an element of your work and, and you do look at that. But Absolutely. also you look at the frontline stuff and like what, mm-hmm. what are people saying on the front line? What are people saying? What are our employees actually saying about our culture? Are For sure. how diverse we are. So I'm interested mm-hmm. to hear from you how you engaged with the frontline staff to get their mm-hmm. insights and feedback about the work that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I use the feedback of our employees to inform the strategy, right? The things that are the key pillars and the objectives we want to achieve are going to be more impactful and valuable to the organization and really drive progress if they're informed by the things that our people who work for the organization are saying they want and need to see, right? I think that's where the best feedback and ideas come from are the people who are entrenched in it every single day. And it really happened organically when I came into this role. I received a phone call from someone who I had worked with for years uh, in my entry-level position with the organization and known since then. And he worked in the warehouse at one of our uh, facilities here in Rochester. He called me up and said, amazing. So glad that you have this job. It's about time that the organization focused on it. You're going to be awesome. But you know that the experience of DE&I and those objectives are not felt at this facility, right? You know that that's not the experience of the folks in this warehouse. And I hope that you focus on that. And that was really my call to action at that time to say, that's the goal, right? That's the goal is to make sure that it is felt regardless of where you are or what your role is in the organization. And so it set me off on a world tour, literally, (laughs) to travel to all of our facilities and have live listening sessions and discussions with our frontline employees. Now, in the past three and a half years, my team and I have been to 28 different locations across the globe and spoken to more than 3,500 employees face-to-face. So getting in a room, 10 to 12 people, asking them, what does it feel like to work here? What would you change? What's going well? What would you like to see in terms of creating a more inclusive culture where diversity is celebrated? What does that look like here, right? There's a lot of themes that are consistent across the globe, no matter where we are. And there's some things that are very unique to specific locations, whether that be the microculture of a building or a site location or the cultural aspects of a specific country. But that feedback is what I take and report out to our senior leadership with very clear actions assigned. Those actions could be at a local level. Some of it's very easy and quick to respond to. And some of it takes a longer time where we need an investment. We need buy-in from senior leadership. We need a new system or tool or benefit or policy that requires a lot of people working together. But then when you come back to the team that you spoke to and say, this policy was informed by your feedback and it's going to be able to create the positive change you were looking for and we did it because of you. That's powerful. Uh, definitely. And so um, I wanna go a bit deeper into that as well. So can you walk us through the feedback that you received? Yeah. It then informed a strategy that you put in place Mm -hmm. and then kind of the overall impact of that once it was in place and up and running. Yeah, absolutely. So when we have the sessions with the team, we're very clear, this is a safe space, right? We're not going to attach anyone's name or the date to the feedback that's shared. It's shared in aggregate out to first the local leadership. So we say, here are the things that we heard from your team while we were here, right? And I'm very mindful to get the leadership's feedback as well, because I find often our middle managers are asked to do so much from top down and bottom up, Mm -hmm. their voice needs to be heard as well, right? So taking that feedback and then putting it in themes of most likely communications, the culture, benefits, different policies that affect that, and then talent, right? The career development is always a huge topic from folks. So that feedback is then shared with my peers in the HR organization and our other 
centers of excellence, whether that be our talent development and learning team or the total rewards team that manages the benefits. And I'm very grateful to have the support of those leaders who are very much interested in integrating that feedback into their strategies as well. So we put a plan together to say, here's what we're going to do. And when I meet quarterly with our executive leadership team, I share that feedback with them. So they have the benefit of hearing what's happening from their teams and what we're doing about it and what support I need from them to get it done. Because sometimes it does require money, right? Being infused into the various budgets to support it. And in addition to coming back and closing that feedback loop with the employees to let them know this has been launched because of you, I'm also very intentional about ensuring we talk about the results and the benefit to the senior leadership, right? How has this changed your employee engagement scores in your survey? How has this changed the inclusion index in the employee survey? Are you seeing better productivity, better retention at the site location because of the actions that we've made? And that's when you can really set clear objectives to say, this is the impact I want to see, right? We want to see a uh, improvement year over year in these survey results. And here's what we did to get there. And everyone gets to be a part of that, right? <laughs> to know that you own a piece of that action that is driving that impact. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's great that you're basically making sure that everyone's looped in at each stage. And there's transparency with what's happening and how well it's done or the imp impact it's having, um, not mm -hmm. only on your employees on the individual level, leadership level, but as a business and it's, it's revenue. Like this is how yes. we're making all of these changes is improving mm -hmm. the business as a whole, um, which Absolutely. is great. So did you face any challenges? I know the answer is yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I'm interested. What was what's one of the challenges that you faced that you wasn't quite expecting? I think the biggest surprise to me, I knew there was dissatisfaction and, and disengagement, certainly amongst all pockets, all levels of the organization. That's normal, right? In any company. I did not expect pushback at the frontline level or entry level of the organization. I thought that my biggest challenge was going to be proving the business case mm -hmm. to the senior leadership that I needed buy-in and investment from. But I did face also pushback from folks that we were having these live listening sessions with, sometimes people who didn't agree with the DEI strategy, didn't see themselves reflected in the strategy and therefore didn't want to participate. And also from people who were not trusting the organization. And here I am being the face of it, right? In the conversation to say, I don't trust that this is going to last. I don't trust that what you're saying is going to happen. I've been here a long time and this is a flavor of the month, right? That was a direct quote. Yeah, It's like a gut punch I mean, well, <laughs> to hear that happen though right it's not uncommon and I, it's not unvalidated either um Absolutely. because there are a lot of organizations that we've seen now are pulling back mm -hmm. and so they were only really yeah. doing DEI as just it was the flavor of the month that's kind of what exactly that's what's in that's what's trending mm -hmm. so let's do it um so I'm curious and I'd love to hear and you're probably going to explain it anyway but yeah. like how did you tackle that like how did you overcome that yeah, I really, even though I was taken aback, which is a normal human reaction, right? I understand where they're coming from, right? I understand where that pushback is coming from. And so I approach it with empathy in the moment because the goal of inclusion is that everyone would see themselves in the strategy. They would feel that they are seen and valued. And so people who feel outside of that, for whatever reason, they don't see themselves reflected in the strategy. I approach that with empathy. How can you see yourself reflected here, right? To be an outsider, to feel like you're on the margins, that's the exact thing that we're trying to remedy. Mm -hmm. So if someone who is from dominant culture doesn't see themselves in this strategy, how can I make you feel like you're a part of it? What do you need to see? And really probing to ask those questions and also validating where people are coming from, as you said, right? 
that's real, right? Your lack of trust comes from your experience. And I'm not going to question that. I recognize it. I understand it. I respect it. And what do you need to see from me in order to trust? How can you be a part of that, right? Really engaging people in the change. So to say, if you think this is going to be a one and done, then help it not be, right? You get to play a role in that. So hold me accountable and become a part of the team, right? Now you can be an ambassador at the site. So I'm going to be talking to you every month and we'll make sure that it doesn't lose sight of the focus because you get to be a part of it. Oh, fantastic. And um, <laughs> how would you then tackle that with senior leadership? Because I don't, mm-hmm. I think a lot that you said does probably work for both. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, yes. is there any elements in addition to that that you have found is effective when it mm-hmm. comes to senior leadership specifically? Yeah, it's all about the data and being able to demonstrate an impact on the enterprise objectives through the work of DEI. I say it very often that people understand DEI in one of three ways. The best is that you get it in your heart right? It's your lived experience or you're learning from someone's lived experience. You feel the empathy, you feel the connection and you you get it, right? Or you get it here in your head. It's a business case, right? So you can understand how this is going to impact the bottom line. And it's something that investors care about. It's something that our customers are focused on. So you can see the alignment there and it makes logical sense. If that doesn't work, if you can't connect on that level, it's the back pocket. It's the wallet. You make people feel it where they're going to see an impact to their pay. So you hold people accountable in their goals that impact what their merit increases, what their bonus is by having a focus on inclusion. And that drives action because it's something that's being measured. It's something they're being held accountable for, and therefore it's going to get attention. So I take that approach trying to mesh them all together, giving everyone an opportunity, you know, for the hearts and minds piece, but also recognizing that's not enough. We need the systems to be created to stop that bias and we need to hold people accountable for it with measures that I get in front of the leadership with on a regular basis. So I have a DEI dashboard that has all of our metrics, both leading and lagging indicators that I share with the executive leadership quarterly, and they have their own view of how that cascades into their organization as well. So we can really have a productive conversation about what's our goal? How can I help you drive that within your organization? And overall, what's the impact to the business, right? How is this helping us reach our enterprise objectives and priorities? Mm. And are you finding the the dashboard that you've spoken about helps you explain a little bit more to the other areas of the business because we talk Mm -hmm. about DEI is going to be the most effective Mm -hmm. once it's integrated into every aspect Um, but sometimes different parts of the business talk differently (laughs) work differently (laughs) so how have you found that yeah I think making it as specific to the organizational unit is imperative so If you're looking at individualized inclusion index scores, for example, from our employee survey, recognizing there's different cultural factors at play in terms of how people are going to respond to feedback. And I've really leaned on my team for this as well. I can give them a ton of credit, um, particularly talking about different cultural norms in Europe and our European countries that we have and our countries across Asia as well as opposed to in North America, where I've been told if we have a eight out of 10 in the US, like you don't expect that in France, as an example, if you get a five in France, like you're doing great. (laughs) So being able to set that level of expectation with our leaders when we're talking about it and to translate it into their business goals, right? But everyone has shared objectives in terms of enhancing the employee experience. That's one of our enterprise priorities. But the actions and how people take action on that really should be individualized. So speaking to the operations team, which, as we talked about, has a lot of frontline employees, that's going to have different objectives in terms of the number of non-wired, as we might also call them, 
the number of non-wired or frontline employees that are engaged in these activities. That's a good measure to look at in operations. If we look at the sales organization, there's different objectives there. How are we really partnering with our customers? How are we using DEI as a differentiator when we are presenting a value proposition to a customer, right? How many uh, relationships are we creating with shared ERG activities with our customers? And those become some of the measures that ultimately lead to the goal. Because to your point, it, it translates differently across the organization based on the department, the function, and honestly, the geography and culture as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, Noel, you clearly have a great handle on <laughs> on DEI and, and Avanto. Um, your insights have been completely invaluable. I think it, it's great to hear that you are really understanding how your company works and how your employees and getting that feedback to know how they're actually feeling and then being flexible, right? And, and adapting mm -hmm. where you feel you need to. Um, yeah. because I think it's important because we're talking about inclusion so we want to make sure that everyone feels yeah. seen in the work that we're doing so you're going to inevitably you're going to have to kind of change a little bit on how yeah. you might say something the language that you use or the approach that you Absolutely. take to make sure that though that particular individual can really understand and see themselves in the work mm -hmm. um, For sure. reflecting on your career what's one lesson you've learned that you wish you knew when you actually started this work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great question. And there's so many things that I wish I could go back and tell 23 year old Noelle when she started her career. Uh, I think I've learned a lot about how being able to speak for my passion and not from it particularly when there is a, a righteous indignation there and anger or disappointment that that's valid, right? And recognizing that there is an inequity, being able to mature and have much more of a strategic approach in terms of communication and finding alignment with people in terms of how I express that has been very helpful, whereas 23-year-old Noel was out there clapping back, right? I saw that something happened and I was on fire to be able to respond to it. I still have that fire. I speak from it, but I don't have that be leading the communications because I don't want people to see that emotion and disregard the substance of it. I want them to see the substance. I want them to connect. And ultimately that's the goal, right? You're not going to get anywhere if someone is building up a defense. And so being inclusive in my communications is something that I've learned the hard way <laughs> throughout my life um, and something that I, I try to teach people who are more early in their careers as well. Like you're justified in being upset about this. And if you lead with that anger in the conversation, that's all they're going to see, right? So process it, <laughs> have some ways to get it out, journal, meditate, run, whatever it is. And then come pre prepared, right? Come correct with what you have to say and recognize that finding a connection and alignment with someone uh, is how you're going to get it done. Yeah. Oh, no, I love that about learning to speak for your passion mm -hmm. versus from it. Um, correct. It's, it's, that's quite a powerful statement. And it's, it's so true. It's difficult, um, especially with the work that, that we're doing because mm -hmm. it is very emotive and yeah. um it it's touching it's changing lives um mm -hmm. so but it's a skill and yeah. um it's great to hear that it's one that you've understood that it's kind of a journey like you've gone through the motion Absolutely. it's not something that you're going to wake up and be able to do completely overnight but to be mindful of it and to start as soon as you can mm -hmm. Um, will help you in the long run to achieve everything that you're wanting to achieve. So that's that's great, Noel. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation today. It's been really, yeah. really amazing. Um, you're a fantastic leader and Thank you. you're, in, you're an inspiration. You inspire me, definitely. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, and so just before you do leave us, um, yes. is there one piece of advice that you can give to our leaders listening in that are wanting to to make the changes in their organization to help them along their way 
Yeah. Be open, right? Recognize that you don't have all of the answers. You don't need to, right? You have a team of people who are ready and willing to work with you and share their feedback. And so being open to that is the biggest thing that you can do in order to drive the change. People will give you so much grace as long as you're willing to show up and listen and learn, right? I say it often that we're all on a journey here. DEI is not this mountaintop. We're going to reach the pinnacle and be like, we've achieved it, right? There's always something to learn and do. And so being open to that, recognizing that and giving each other the opportunity to learn collectively in community is the most powerful thing. So if you're a leader and you're listening to this and you're like, I don't know where to get started or there's so much to do, I want to be inclusive, I don't know where to begin. Or if you're a DEI leader and you're overwhelmed because it's a huge job, right? The biggest thing that I can say is be open to feedback from the people around you, from the people in your organization, find your allies, find your supporters, find the detractors, ask them why, what can you do? And just be open to that, right? Working collaboratively is only successful if you recognize you're not the smartest person in the room, you don't have all the answers, and you're going to do this better if you have the support of a team. Oh, wonderful. Um, well, Noel, thanks again so much for joining me today. For our listeners, how best can they connect with you to stay up to date with all things DEI with you and Avantor? Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Please find me on LinkedIn, Noel France. I welcome a connection there. I love the, the DEI community that we all want to achieve the same thing. And so people are always willing to have conversations and best practices, sharing. When I was in the marketing world, it was much more protective of that secret sauce. Yeah, it is. Isn't it? I love the sense of community here. Please reach out, connect. I would love to have conversations and understand how I can learn from others as well. So I welcome that connection. Oh, fantastic. Well, Noel, enjoy the rest of your day. And until Thank we speak you. again, I can't wait. Thank you so much, Natasha. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you for the work that you do. No, thank you. Appreciate you.